one of the things that I'm absolutely thrilled about in this CN is how this second row seat works in this thing. It's got a feature called Super Slide. And the reason I'm so excited about it is because of people like me. I'm six foot three. So in the second row, it's a little bit cramped. That's okay, but wait till you see Super Slide. You've got 643 cup holders in it. Toyota really, really wants you to be well hydrated. I'm just kidding. It's almost 643. It's actually 18. These little tabs right here that are just in front of the rearview mirrors. There's two there, and then there's one right back here on the very edge of the tail light. Those are called vortex emulators. Air here prior to hitting that specific area is like big like this. When it hits this area, it channels it and causes it to go between the rearview mirror and the glass in order to make it more aerodynamic. Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this gloriously beautiful 2021 Toyota Sienna XSE. This thing is absolutely packed with safety, comfort, technology, performance, convenience features, more than you could shake a stick at. And we're gonna go over all of those features in this video. And I would like to also take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to Midstate Toyota in Asheboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this beautiful 2021 Toyota Sienna. I'll be sure to leave a link to Midstate Toyota's website so you can check out their wonderful inventory of all new and pre-owned vehicles. Make sure you look them up if you're looking for your next Toyota. Right off the bat, the thing that I love the most about the new Sienna is the fact that Toyota seems to be trying to get away from the whole minivan stigma of people not wanting to drive minivans because they look like minivans. Obviously, you know that this thing is a minivan, but when you look at the lines, check out the hood, the line there in the very back that goes all the way down. You can see the back window, how it's more um, like angled right there. And that gives it more of an SUV look. The tail lights are connected down all the way down to this plastic piece here. That just, that just doesn't look like in any way what a traditional minivan looks like. And then you add on top of that, the fact that this is the XSE level and you get all of the, like the blacked out Sienna emblem there on the back, um, the blacked out shark fin antenna on top, the black 20 inch wheels, and then also the black rear view mirror covers. And when you put all that together, it makes this thing look so much more aggressive and non minivan looking. I absolutely love an aggressive fascia to a car. And I love the honeycomb grill there that is just looks like a great big mouth. To me that just it just looks so good. And and I think that I like it because it just stands out. There's nothing else out there that looks like this. You can see that you've got the wide angle LED fog lights there at the very bottom the aggressive looking and very angular sharp looking headlights led wrap around daytime running lights and the fact that this one has the blue toyota emblem for years toyota has associated blue emblems with hybrid and since this one is hybrid exclusive you've got the blue emblem you see how the line is over that wheel well right there that is just such a cool look to me. It's, it's really athletic. And then you can see the line that comes off of this, off the top here of the rear tail light, and you can follow it all the way down. I think it, it literally goes all the way down the whole side of the vehicle. And then the line that comes off of the bottom portion of the tail light here and how it goes all the way down. See that? All the way to the front wheel really sculpted you also can kind of tell that this is a hybrid by the fact that you don't see any tailpipes nothing at all in a world where dual exhaust even if it's not real dual exhaust is king 
you don't see any tailpipes at all. There is a little tailpipe right there, but it's understated. It's actually more hidden than anything. I kind of like that. I'm excited about this, uh, you know, because of the fact that it's hybrid only and the fuel that you're, or the, the miles per gallon that you're gonna get is an even 36, 36, 36. So 36 highway, 36 city, 36 combined on regular gas. That's incredible fuel economy. While you're walking around looking at the outside of the Sienna, you may notice that there are some dots on the bumpers. You can see there's a dot there. And then all the way across, there are four total on the rear bumper. And then you've got some on the very, very front as well. And the dots, the reason I'm pointing these out is because these are basically a safety feature. You can see right there, there's one. And then you've got them all the way across. And that's called park assist. And that's what beeps when you get too close to something in a parking lot. And that's just one of the safety features of the Sienna. As I mentioned, this thing is packed with tons of incredible safety features. And one of those safety packages is called Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. And it's known as an active safety system. And it includes pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, full speed range dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane trace assist, automatic high beams, and road sign assist. And one of the ways that you know it's got all of these safety features is that you see a triangle right there on the dash. And those are, that's a forward looking camera that's always looking for things. It's looking for road signs and it's also part of the uh, pre-collision system and the full range dynamic radar cruise control. And as I mentioned before, because this one has the XSE package, it's riding on Michelin 235 50R20 uh, tires and rims. And those rims are a sweet five spoke split design. And you can see there, it almost looks like they're, the, the, the pattern on them almost looks like a carbon fiber look. You see that? You can also see the rear uh, disc brake right there. And that is ventilated. And what that means is that there is a groove that passes in the middle of the disc and that is meant for cooling. And the front disc brake is exactly the same, except it's a little bit bigger. Okay, one of the things that I'm most excited about the 2021 Sienna is the key. It has to do with the key, I should say. You can see there on the top on the left is the unlock button. On the right is the lock button. Second row down on the left, it says hold, and that has to do with your side doors. So hold and it'll open the left side or the driver's side, hold and it'll open and close the right side, hold and it'll open and close the rear. And then this is the panic alarm. You also see a little tab here on the back. And when you push this tab and you pull, holy cow, I just did that with one hand you can see that there is a physical key that comes out of the the um, the key fob and if you ever if the battery in your key fob ever dies then you're going to want to pull that key out like i just did come here and open the door manually with this metal key you don't want to use this on a regular basis though because it's not as strong as just say a regular key as long as the key fob is on your person, all you need to do is approach the vehicle. You can see there's a little dimple right there on the top of that door handle. There's also a button on the power sliding door handle in the rear. The doors are locked, so all I need to do is grab the door handle and you can hear that it beeped and it also unlocked. And let's say I'm finished using the vehicle. I exit and then I can just touch the dimple and it'll lock the doors. Now, as I approach, again, remember the doors are locked. As I approach the rear, I can do one of two things. I can go up and you can see there's a little sticker right here. You're gonna wanna remove that sticker if you, if you buy it. There's also another sticker here and it's telling you what to do as long as the key fob is on your person. And you also have a, it, it almost looks like a Wi-Fi signal 
emblem that's on that black portion right there and that's permanent so all you have to do to open the power sliding door if it's equipped with it is to come up to the vehicle and put your foot under it and that's it boom and I'm gonna show you that again same thing applies approach the vehicle key on person boom and the thing that I love about that is that it actually works and it works well and it works the first time now to close the rear door all I need to do if I want to close it is just pull the handle and it closes for me so let's go close the passenger side now again all I need to do is pull it gently and it closes I don't have to jerk it I don't even really have to pull it all the way out now I told you that there's a black button here all you need to do is press the button and that opens it so there's a bunch of different ways to open these back doors let's take a look at the rear door and there's a rubber piece directly under the middle portion of it and I can and it's right here under the first in and I can just squeeze that as long as the key is on my person and it's gonna open the power rear door for me and then if I want to close the rear door I can go here and I can just press it so that's one way to open the rear door I'm gonna show you another way to open the rear door and in fact it's easier again key has to be on my person there it is and now I can also close it using the kick motion so you see here the little example is showing somebody there and they have a box in their hands and as long as the key is in the pocket if you've got a box in your hands all you need to do is kick it and here we go now did you hear that it did it a little differently than the door I kicked it and then it beeped and then it beeped three times and there was a little bit of a delay and that's to make sure that you're getting out of the way so that it doesn't knock you in the head that's a that's a pretty neat thing by the way one of the things that I read online if you have the kick open and close feature on your Sienna for the back door and you have a tow hitch installed because this thing actually has a 3,500 pound tow capacity but if you install the Toyota tow hitch then it will disable the kick open and close feature for the back door so you will have to open it manually or you know with your key fob open and close or using the handle that's uh, under the Sienna emblem on the back but that is worth noting so that if you are considering getting the tow hitch know that it will disable the kick open and close feature I can't wait to show you the bridge well I just did but gosh I, lo I love the interior of this thing and this interior is exclusive to the XSE and I think if I was gonna get one of these this is the exact model I would get I love an aggressive dark interior and one of the things about this is that it's got that contrast it's like an orangish red contrast stitching you've got some soft points here and uh, this has got a little bit of give to it but uh, and then it, it's not a carbon fiber but it, it's got these lines in it it's definitely designed for for uh, how, how dare I say younger people you've got 643 cup holders in it Toyota really really wants you to be well hydrated I'm just kidding it's almost 643 it's actually 18 and you've got all kinds of neat storage areas all over this thing you can see there's a like a flat panel like a shelf right there and it's got those lines in it and that is just gonna be absolutely perfect to fit your cell phone and then you've got soft material here and then there's a gigantic storage area underneath that bridge that is that is just perfect for any type of bag 
whether it's a purse or even a backpack, it looks like it could fit under there. You've also got a charging point down there. You've got USB and um, I think even lightning cable charging points all over this thing for your iPhone devices or your Apple devices. The seats are really comfy. I love how the seats have the nice bolstering there. Look how big and thick that, that side bolster is. Very supportive. Um, the material here is interesting. It's, it's not cloth. It's um, not leather. It feels like a hybrid, <laughs> pun intended, between leather and rubber, and, and it feels like it would be very, very durable. Now, the bottom portion, um, it, it looks like leather, but it's not. It's, it's super comfy. I drove around in it for a while today, and it's really comfy. Now, one of the things that I wanna highlight is something called Super Slide. You can see the rails that are in the floor and how far they go back. So I've got the, come on airplane. You see those rails right there? Look how far those go back. The ones that are connected to the bottom of this seat. And now keep in mind, I have the rear seat folded into the floor. Also, these captain's chairs are not removable. You could actually remove them in the previous generation, Sienna. These are fixed, so they're not removable. So right here, there's this big tab, okay? So I'm gonna hop in. I'm gonna take that tab that I showed you just now, right here, squeeze it, and then slide it back. <laughs> now look. I'm six foot three, and look how much room I have. The people in the back seat probably wouldn't be that comfy in this position. So let's take a look at what that's gonna look like. Look how far back that is. That is crazy. Obviously, when it's back this far, look, the third row literally has no room. So you're not gonna get a third passenger back here unless they're here, and this seat is not slid all the way back. But my goodness, if you're carrying four people in this thing and they have socks this fabulous, look at my Argos, then you're gonna be super comfy back here. This is absolutely fantastic. Another thing that I wanna point out is this big ridge right here. You can see where the ceiling goes way up. And I would say that's, that's at least four to five inches right there. And so the benefit of that is being able to have plenty of headroom. So look at how much headroom I have back here. And the seat is not really even reclined all the way back at all. So I can, I can recline the seat back. And now I'm just sitting here like a king. That is the coolest thing. I know it's not like this huge safety feature or something like that, but sometimes convenience features are what make a vehicle. And super long slide, yeah, sign me up for that. Another really nice feature I'm gonna show you is the how the back seat folds into the floor. So the third row seat, oh yeah, super long slide. I do have to, uh, pull this seat up a little bit in order to show you this next feature. Now in the previous model, that back seat, it wasn't like difficult to fold into the, the well here, but this is super easy. It's only two steps and it's basically like one step actually when you think about it. So you, you go here and you pull this lever and watch this. Boom. One step, and that was a small one. So that was the, the and, and by the way, it's a 60-40 split. So 60-40. And so check it out again, here we go. That is so cool. I love that. Boom. And then to fold it back up, it's a two-step process. So you go back. And then you go here and then you quickly release this strap and it locks into place. You put that all along the back because it's Velcroed and that is it. How convenient is that? So it's one handle 
to bring it up and down. And then it's the little strap. Release. I love that. Look at this handle. I don't know that I've ever seen this in a minivan. And you can see it's designed for your smaller passengers. So if you have a little child and they may have a little bit of a harder time stepping on, up into that, although it's, it's really for adults, that's really nothing. But for a smaller child, that may be a challenge. So take a look here. You've got a perfect grab bar that they can pull themselves up and get themselves into the seat. Then there's a higher one for adults. Uh, maybe you've got elderly friends that need a ride as well. And so that's gonna be a perfect, perfect element for them. And it's not in the way of getting in and out of the Sienna at all. You also have, and it's almost a little hidden button. See that, that's your power door button. And there's one on the other side as well under the handle. When you press that, it's going to close the rear door. Also wanted to point out that there are shades here on the back glass. And that is really, really nice. I really appreciate the, the shades on long trips or short trips or intermediate trips. And then there's a speaker embedded into the door panel here power rear doors or power rear rear windows and then you can open the door back up by just doing that super nice so that rear handle that's a really cool design element i like that thanks toyota let's hop in the driver's seat and get everything from the perspective of the driver. As long as you have the key on your person, you can work the vehicle completely. All you have to do is put your foot on the brake and then tap the power button and it lights up. Beautiful, beautiful screen there. One of the things that you probably can't tell um, by, because you're not here and that's the fact that this screen is almost muted. It's got like a, a muted look to it to where it's not all that bright and that is perfect by design. Uh, we all know how like tiring a screen can be on our eyes and actually contribute to, to fatigue. Um, I have a feeling that that's what Toyota had in mind with designing the screen like this because it's it's it almost like blends in with the surroundings and that is beautiful. There are uh, screens on a bunch of cars that I've reviewed before that are just obscenely bright and this one is just is just really really nice. Nice and soft. I love the fact that there are not um, that this is not touch sensitive and that you actually have real dials and real buttons on the edges of the screen. That is very, very nice. Thank you for that, Toyota. And I like the fact that this is all, it, it all makes sense. Uh, the way the buttons are located and, and the, the way everything is actually uh, labeled and displayed. And it all works well. Looking at the steering wheel here, you can see that the bottom portion of the steering wheel, this is gonna be for volume and voice commands. And then on the right side is mode and then skip and back. So the way to think of this is the bottom buttons on the steering wheel are audio and voice commands. And then on the left side, this is all, this is Bluetooth. And then these two functions here are gonna be for your big display there in between the tack and the speedometer. And we'll go over all that. So that's the way to identify that. Then on the right side, of the steering wheel on the upper portion is gonna be all basically safety features. And so this is your all speed dynamic radar cruise control, uh, lane keep assist, lane tracing, and then uh, cruise control here. And then right there is radar cruise. So I just press this button right there and it says radar cruise active. Please pay attention to other vehicles. And so this then is how when I press this, this is going to determine the distance that the Sienna is going to maintain between you and the vehicle in front of you. So I'm going to push this and you'll see that there are blue blocks right there. You see in the very top display. So there's that's three, that's two, that's one. That's the, the uh, greatest amount of distance next 
to greatest and then the least amount of distance right there. And so when I press this button, I can see that those lane, lane lines are not there anymore. I'm going to push it again and there they come. Lane, lane tracing assist is turned on, steering assist is active. So lane trace assist via a camera up here, the Sienna can actually see the lanes in the road. As you're driving, you can actually see the lines on the road. And when it determines that you're getting outside left or right of those lanes, it will actually help to nudge the steering wheel back into the lane. So let's say you're drifting to the left out of your lane, it's going to nudge the steering wheel gently back into the right lane. It will also um, it, it will also vibrate the steering wheel to let you know that you're getting outside of your lane as well. It feels kind of like running over one of those rumble strips on the highway. You can see over here on the left side is your signal stalk. And so one, one of the neat features that I like about it is that you've got a um, basically like a lane change feature. So I'm just going to tap it down without fully engaging it. And you saw it blink three times. And then I can fully engage it and it's going to stay. So I do this at a stop light, stop sign, whatever, or I do this when I'm just changing lanes on the road. That's really neat. And then I have daytime running lights. And so you can see it says DRL off and that's all the lights in the front are off. This is automatic. And so the lights are going to cut on automatically at night. And then this is parking lights. And then this is regular headlights on manually. And then here are my fog lights off and on. Always, always use your fog lights when it's foggy outside or when it's raining or snowing or the weather's bad. Always do that. And then I can take this stalk and push it forward if, oh, that's already there. I can push it forward if I want to use my brights. And then right here is your windshield wiper stalk. So you see I have mist, off, intermittent, low, and high. Those are the speeds. And then this determines the intermittent sensitivity. And then this is for the rear wiper, whether it's intermittent or on manually or off. I can uh, pull it toward me to wash the front glass. And then I push this away from me to wash the rear glass. This one also does have automatic headlights. So you can see that the icon that's lit up right there in the center of your screen, um, that is automatic high beams. And so whenever you are driving and there's no one around, the high beams are going to cut on automatically. You can just push that forward and keep it forward all the time. And the automatic high beams are now active and now they're off. And so what that does is it determines when you are near a vehicle, whether one is in oncoming traffic or if you're behind a vehicle, it will take it down to low beams. If no one's around, it'll automatically take them up to high beams. I personally recommend keeping that feature on all the time because you have no idea how advantageous it is to drive around with your high beams, even on city streets. If no one's around, it makes it so much brighter. Uh, then to the far left is traction control off. And then on the far right of this strip of buttons right here, is going to be for the, your gauge brightness and that's for your gauges. So whenever you push it up, that this little thing popped up, I'm pushing it down now. And you can see they're lowering. There you go. Power door off. That's if you have little kids and they keep pressing the door that I showed or the button that I showed you earlier, you can press that and, and it'll deactivate the, the side power door features and, uh, so that they can't open them. And then here's your gas door right there. That's always gonna be on the left side. You can see down here by the E button on the fuel gauge. And then you can see here, it says that there's a little arrow pointing to the left. And that means your fuel door is on the left side of the Sienna. Okay, let's take a look at the left side of the steering wheel. So you see you have a multi-directional keypad up, down, left, right, and an OK button. And everything I'm about to show you is going to have to do with the screen here in the middle of your dash. So I'm going to press it to the right. And you can see it says radar ready at the top. But then there's lots of safety features that are listed right here. And the one with the blue block around it right now is lane trace assist. PCS is pre-collision system. 
BSM is blind spot monitor, park assist, RCTA is rear cross traffic alert, PKSB is pedestrian sensing, and RSA is the ability to read street signs. All of those, I'm going to go back up now, all of those are on. And I personally recommend keeping all of those on all the time. If you want to cut them off or make any changes to them, you can just press the OK button in the middle. Pre-collision system is off. And I actually want to cut it back on. So I'm going to go press the OK button in the middle again and cut it back on. Blind spot monitor, you can cut it off and on there. Same thing. See that? And so now I'm going to go down to vehicle settings. And the way you do that, or the way you get into that, is you press and hold. So I'm going to go to this OK button here and press and hold OK. And there you go. PSD is power side door. PBD is power back door. So I can go up there and then press and hold again. And then here are a lot of settings for power side doors. Hands free, PSD is on. For the left side and the right side. Left side alert volume, right side alert volume. So you can really get super detailed in the settings that you have for your power side doors. And so I can press OK again, and then I can raise and lower the volume of the beep that it happens when I open and close the right side power door right there. So isn't that fantastic? Now to get out of that, I'm just going to hit the back arrow right here. And then there's power back door. I can press that. And then system settings, opening it. So check this out, opening adjustment. I'm going to press OK. And so look, I can actually customize the opening height of the power back door right here. That's the highest. That's a little lower, a little lower, a little lower. And look, that just barely opens the thing at all. The reason why you would want to adjust this, and I'm going up and down on that multi-directional keypad on the steering wheel right now. The reason that you would want to adjust this, one of the reasons, is if you have a hard time opening it or reaching it at its highest height, or if, for example, you have a garage that is, is lower and you may want to adjust it to four or even three to open only at that level uh, inside of your garage so you don't bump it. Great feature. Now I'm going to hit that back arrow again. There's the volume. So that's all power back already. And so now here is some hybrid information. So these are driving information. And so you, there are little dots that you see those three little dots right there. That tells me what page I'm on. And so, um, the, and, and anytime I come into a screen where I see that has any, any of those dots, I know that I have several pages that I can scroll and I can push up and down on the multi-directional keypad on the face of the steering wheel in order to access those screens. I'm going to push down. And so that is a digital speedometer with distance to empty, outside temperature, clock, all kinds of things, odometer. This thing has 75 miles on it. And then there's your eco score. I love that. So I was actually, this is where you can literally play a little game with fuel economy. As I was driving it uh, earlier today, this, this little measurement right here was up and down. And then it was giving me a start and a cruise and a stop score. And so it was lit up green here. And so this basically allows me to, to play a little game with this uh, display here in the middle while I'm driving in order to achieve maximum fuel efficiency. God, that is just the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Then I'm going to go back up, distance to empty, total average is 22 miles per gallon. That's not accurate really because this thing's only been driven 75 miles. Okay, so I'm going to go right now, radar ready. And this allows me to see my radar cruise control in, in, a big, in, a, in a bigger picture if I would rather focus on the radar cruise control. And you can see when I go back to the Eco Score screen, the radar goes up here. But when I go right, the radar disappears from here and goes to here because that's what I'm focusing on now. I can go down and then I can see what road I'm on even right now. That's really neat. And then this is a compass. Pretty cool. Radio, it's off right now. 
and this is going to be drive info as you can see I've had the vehicle running for 16 minutes just now and then back to safety so that's a, a tour of this button right here on your steering wheel up down left right and okay we also use the back button there now one of the things that you're going to notice here is that you don't see is a tachometer this is called a kilowatt meter and this is what's in a hybrid vehicle to replace a traditional tachometer it works just like a tachometer but instead of having um, your your rotations per minute or your rpms on your engine on a gasoline engine uh, you've got a kilowatt meter so while you're cruising so if you take your foot off the brake and you're just cruising then it's going to charge itself. It has this feature called regenerative braking. So this is actually a self-charging hybrid vehicle. And so when you're, when you're cruising, you let your foot off of the gas and it's not on the brake, it's going to charge itself. It's also going to charge itself when you apply your foot to the brake. That's why you never have to plug the vehicle in. It also charges itself by the engine while you're driving. The engine just cut on, by the way. I've been sitting here this whole time, um, and the vehicle has been running. Air is on, it's nice and cool and everything, but the, the actual gasoline engine was off this whole time because we're operating on battery power. Um, and then you can see it says eco and power. As I accelerate, this, this dial here is going to go in the direction of power, and then as I decelerate or let off the gas, uh, it's going to go down to eco and even into charge if I let my foot off the gas. My goal while I'm driving is to keep it kind of here in the middle and eco as much as I can to make it as fuel efficient as possible at all times. You can also see here there's a green ready light and that light is always on when the vehicle is, is, is running. Essentially the reason that is there is because there's a lot of time when you're sitting in, this, in a, a hybrid vehicle and there's nothing on as far as an engine sound. Right now you can probably hear the engine running, but if there is sufficient enough charge on the battery, then that engine doesn't need to be running because it can run on battery power. And so that's why that ready light is on so that you know that if you, you're, you're thinking to yourself, man, I've been sitting here for a little while, you're waiting on somebody outside of a place to pick them up or something, and you don't remember if the car's running or not or if it's on or not, just look down. If that says ready, then you're ready to put it in gear and drive away. Pretty neat. You also have a, a, a manually adjustable steering wheel here so you can pull this down and it will allow you to pull in and out the steering wheel and also go up and down but it is manual now on the uh, higher packages than the xse this is um, power tilt and telescope and i believe that's the first time that a power tilt and telescope is even available on a sienna now moving over here you have uh, drive modes and these are really, really neat. You can see here it says drive mode. And when I toggle this up and down, it's gonna reflect in that center multi-information display right there. And so I just toggled it up and, it, and you saw the color change from green to black. Nothing, nothing's going on. I'm gonna toggle it again and it says red or it's colored red. And you can see right there it says sport. Let me zoom in. You see where it says sport right there? And so I'm gonna to toggle it again black eco and then up to sport so sport is going to change something called throttle mapping so when I push this up and that's red in the middle uh, that changes throttle mapping to make the accelerator more sensitive whenever I push it down uh, it's going to make it so that it, it, it feels like it has more torque. It's also going to change how the uh, climate system works. It's going to basically give me an extra fan speed. Whenever I pull it down, that's normal mode. So there's no color. See, red is sport and green is eco and the middle is normal. So that's kind of a combination of eco and sport. Then I'm going to pull it down and I can see Eco. That's the most fuel efficient mode to drive the Sienna in, and it's gonna change the throttle mapping to give it less accelerator um, response. So in, e, in sport mode, I can push the accelerator and I'll feel it pull. You know, it's, it's got, it feels like it's got more power. In Eco, I can push the accelerator down and it takes a greater distance in order to achieve the same power as in sport mode. It also is going to change your um, climate system and reduce a fan speed to make it more fuel efficient.
EV mode is the way that the vehicle can be driven on straight up battery electricity only for very short distances at very low speeds I'm gonna I just pushed it and it says EV mode unavailable hybrid battery low do not let that scare you the only thing that that means is that all we have to do is go and drive it around for about 15 20 minutes and let that charge build back up through regenerative braking and then I'll be able to use EV mode so whenever you press that and it beeps and says hybrid battery low that doesn't mean you need to go get a new battery or anything it just means you need to drive it around a few minutes and charge it up so that you can drive it at low at low speeds uh, on electricity only I recommend doing this in a parking lot so let's say you're going into a parking garage or a busy shopping center and you're looking for a place to park just tap this button and you'll be able to drive on electricity only as there is enough charge on the hybrid battery this is your parking brake so whenever I put I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and I'm gonna engage it in drive and so now you see how that light went away and then I'm going to engage it in park and you can see the light will come back on so that uh, puts on your parking brake automatically for you so that you do not have an emergency brake uh, a lot of times it, uh, Toyota puts in Lexus put an emergency brake here and you activate and deactivate it here well that's gone away it's automatic and so all you need to do is engage it in drive reverse or park and then this is called brake hold whenever you're at a red light and your seat belt is fastened and the vehicle is in drive and so you're driving and you come up to a red light you can actually take you can come to a complete stop and if this is activated you can actually um, sit there uh, take your foot off the brake and sit there at the red light without your foot on the brake because it will automatically hold the brake for you this is a fantastic feature and then once the the light turns red all you have to do is tap the gas and go that is brake hold that is a great great feature I love that and I, again I love the fact that you, uh, Toyota put a shifter in here and that it doesn't have that uh, a little button or a dial that you that you use uh, whenever you put it in reverse there's a beautiful brilliant backup camera check that thing out look how wide the angle is on that so that's a that's a really really sweet feature that's a great great safety feature this this line in the middle gives you an indication as to where the middle of the bumper is so if you've got a tow hitch attached right there it should line up with that tab right there and that lets you know if you're backing up to attach it to a trailer if you get to this point and the trailer is lined up to that point then you're good to go to keep going back and line up your your tow hitch great feature and then right here as I mentioned before is that beautiful screen it's nice and muted it's just wonderful so on the top left is the home button and this is your your home button so this is actually customizable I can customize the look of this screen but you can see right here uh, for the purpose of this demonstration that the screen is on the left it's audio on the bottom left it's uh, Bluetooth and then on the right side it's your map then I can go menu and I can hit display and I am going to go general and turn the brightness up so hopefully yeah there we go now that helps with that refresh rate you can see it's no longer all doing that silly stuff so that's really really good change the color all kinds of stuff so I'm gonna go back and I love how the the, the touch screen efficiency of this thing is just fantastic you don't you don't really have to press it twice you just are able to do it I just press destination and this allows me to choose my destination by going to search destination assist that's live operator help favorites recent emergency address point of interest or I can find a destination by contacts from my phone that is just fantastic home is not saved would you like to save it now I can hit yes and then I can hit I can program my home address into my nav system we need to have a talk about that one of the things that I always recommend to people about memorizing the your home address in your navigation system is to not do it 
program an address that is a couple of doors down or somewhere near your house where if you're coming back from a long trip and you hit home, you're going to know within miles of your house anyways how to get to your house, right? Well, don't program your home address, actual home address, into your NAV system. The reason is, if somebody is able to get the key and to steal your vehicle, then they can go here if they're savvy and they can just go right to your house. And if they've got your keys, they can probably get into your house. So that's a little safety tidbit. Don't program your actual home address into the nav system of your vehicle, okay? Stay safe. So then there's audio, AM, FM, XM, USB, Bluetooth. And so I can reorder that based on the uh, frequency that I listen to one of these. I listen to Bluetooth a lot. So I'm gonna go Bluetooth and then I'm gonna put that as number one because I stream a ton from my phone and then I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hit reorder again and if you listen to XM radio a lot, you can put that as number two and press okay. Check that out, how neat is that? So then I can go back to menu and I can go audio and then look, Bluetooth XM. Pretty cool. Phone and this is if I had a phone hooked up. I do not have a phone hooked up but that is unbelievably easy. Uh, that's that's no problem that's super easy then I can go apps uh, this one needs to be updated it looks like it was not initialized at the initial whenever it came to the dealership but that's okay I can download it in the background and we can come back to that uh, then oh look at that and let's go install and we can go continue install in background back to menu I can go projection and this is where I'm going to use this USB interface right here and I'm going to connect it and um, I can then project whatever is on the screen of my phone right onto the screen of the uh, screen of the vehicle right there. Then we're going to go info and eco. I love this button. Uh, this is so neat. I remember the what the gauges looked like in days of old and how pixelated and like old school they look but look how clear and beautiful this looks and years from now we're going to be saying the same thing about how this looks old but anyways so you can see the electric motor or the electric it you can see the gas powered engine is on right now it's turning the electric motor which is charging the battery since we're just sitting here that's how that works now while you're driving and this energy monitor display is on you're going to see the wheels turning you're going to see a lot of things happening going back and forth between the engine and the battery pack. I love that. I actually like to drive, I've got a Prius and I like to drive my vehicle with this display showing um, just so I can see all the cool little dorky things going back and forth. That's just the way I am. Traffic incidents. Are there any traffic incidents nearby? Look at that. So this shows me in real time what's going on near the vehicle. And you can see in this section right here, the little yellow area, there's a little bit of a traffic jam on that exit. How cool is that? A predictive traffic map, and I can actually predict uh, in based on historical uh, traffic patterns what the traffic is going to be like on certain thoroughfares near me. So I can go now or I can go plus, add 15 minutes to it, and then it's going to show me what the traffic is going to be like in, on these thoroughfares within the next 15 minutes, 30 minutes, all the way up to 45 minutes. Weather, right now, and I can go three day, so here's my forecast. I can select a specific day, see the specifics of the weather pattern that day. Beautiful. Oops. Well, look at that, there's remote connect, there's Wi-Fi, there's notifications. I just downloaded the Intune app suite, and so, now I can see all those things. There's climate. And then setup. And this is the screen that I recommend going to if like right when you buy a new Sienna or buy any new vehicle that's equipped with this equipment, go to setup in your uh, menu screen. So you're going to press menu and setup. 
And then this allows you to set up these specific areas uh, in your vehicle to exactly the way you want them to, to go. So I can go projection settings, Apple CarPlay, Android CarPlay. I'm gonna have to cut one of those on uh, before that will work. And then I can go back and go Bluetooth. I don't wanna add anything now. And so now I can customize all of these different things according to the way I want them to work specifically as an owner. And, and it gets really detailed. If you spend this much money on a vehicle that's got this much technology, this much safety, this much comfort and all those things, you owe it to yourself to take the time to sit inside the driver's seat for a while and really orient yourself and, and make sure that you know how the features work. While you're driving around, use the features, use the radar cruise control and the lane tracing and lane keep assist and, and all those things. Take advantage of it because a lot of people, based on the questions that I get asked on, on my videos, uh, they, they don't really utilize all the features in their vehicle. And what I always recommend, when, when I was in the car business, I was in it for 15 years. And every time I would go out to a vehicle and I would go be going over the features of, of the car with the, the customer that just spent thousands of dollars to get this thing, I would tell them, please, after you leave here, take some time to orient yourself, maybe drive the vehicle for a couple of weeks and then really start to dive in and to look at how all the features work. Because there are a ton of features that can help you keep you safe, make it convenient, um, and that, that a lot of people don't even, they, they never even look at them. And because you go from driving one vehicle that you've had for five, 10 years, and as long as your new vehicle has features that are similar to your old vehicle, a lot of people are totally fine. And that keeps them trapped into not discovering the new features of the new vehicle. So that's probably thoroughly confusing and more than you needed to know, but do yourself a favor and look at all the features of your new vehicle so that you can really take advantage of all that it has to offer. These things are absolutely amazing. And then you can see right up here, you've got what normally would be just your map lights. And this is cool. This is a conversation mirror so that I can see, I've got eyes in the back of my head, literally, so that I can see my passengers. And then I've, here is to open and close the power sliding door on the driver's side. This is to open and close it on the passenger side. This is for my power rear door. And then right here is for the sunroof. This is to vent. This is to open and close the sunroof all the way. And then here are my controls for the interior lights. SOS, Safety Connect, uh, that's what you'll hit in the event of an emergency and be connected to a live operator. So check this out, it says attention, check rear seat. Something that is so cool, I was, I was just wrapping up the video of the, of the Sienna and when I cut the vehicle off it said attention, check rear seat. Toyota, thank you so much for doing that because that is, I honestly believe, that is going to, to cut down on the amount of children that are left in car seats and in hot cars and just the unimaginable happens. So thank you for putting that in there. And I've, I've cut the vehicle on and off several times while I've been filming this video today. And every single time, right on the dash, as soon as I cut it off, it says, attention, check rear seat. Excellent, excellent feature. Thank you for doing that, Toyota. Okay, everybody. I think that just about covers all the features of the 2021 Toyota Sienna XSE. Again, I love the fact that the Sienna is now only offered in a hybrid vehicle, and I think that's something that is coming from Toyota. You'll see lots more hybrids, even plug-ins and electric, fully electric vehicles too down the road. This thing is absolutely amazing and I recommend if you're in the minivan market to really give this a close look because it's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, hit that subscribe button and also please 
take a look at midstatetoyota.com. They are the ones, again, that have given me an opportunity to review this vehicle, and I really recommend you take a look at what they have to offer online. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope this helps you enjoy your ride. And remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.